Lately, all of the voices in the JavaScript framework world have been pretty uh, loud, vocal, and opinionated, to say the least. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think that's a bad thing. You hear from amazing developers, people who are much better developers than I am, about why you should use Next.js, why you shouldn't use Next.js. Um, Angular is actually a good thing now, and well, I guess... You don't really hear about Nux too much, but it's actually an amazing framework. But I started taking web development seriously about six or so years ago. And I would say I, I came up, I learned, I grew in the, the golden age of JavaScript. I mean, I saw Gatsby rise. Um, I built things on top of Next.js. I played with Firebase and Superbase and all of the wonderful tools that we have now. But ultimately, about two years ago, I pretty much said goodbye to the JavaScript ecosystem as a whole and started building everything in Laravel. And here's why you should just choose Laravel too. Okay, I got your attention. JavaScript frameworks are, you know, a dime a dozen and PHP Laravel has been around forever. Okay, yes, true, but you're also probably thinking, okay, you knew PHP and if only you knew PHP when it was bad and now it's good and everyone's talking about it now. Yes, but no, here's the truth. I don't really care about if PHP was bad or if PHP is slow or if I shouldn't be using PHP. And here's the even more honest truth. I don't really know PHP. I know Laravel. I'm someone who would say that I still know JavaScript better than I know PHP. Um, and I know enough PHP to get me by. But I think the framework and the ecosystem around Laravel is what allows me to succeed as a developer who is building applicable side projects every single day. And here's the caveat across this whole video. If you are someone who loves the JavaScript ecosystem, 100%. You're bought in. You are okay with grabbing every single uh, tool across the entire ecosystem, across multiple different frameworks, across multiple different libraries. And you're like, I already have my starter kit that I use for 90% of side projects and I can build one in a weekend. Great. Keep using JavaScript. But for me, when I would get comfortable in the stack that I was using, then I would have to learn something else for the part of the stack that I needed to add on to. I would learn how I need to know how to how to work with queues or server jobs and cron and emails. Things that there's a lot of great tools that make those easier nowadays. But you're still learning another tool to add to your proverbial tool belt. So here's four reasons to choose Laravel. If you're someone who is not 100% satisfied with where the JavaScript ecosystem is as a whole, or just not satisfied with what your current tech stack or conglomeration of tools is capable of. Number one user and team account speed. Okay, you have things like NextAuth or auth.js for Svelkit and Remix and everything. Or you have incredible uh, uh, tools like Clerk. And these are great. I love them. But it's still a bunch of extra boilerplate. It's still a lot of finagling things together to make sure you have everything you need for every single instance and circumstance that you might need it. And yes, there's some great starters. There's some great, you know, one line of code that you add and all of a sudden you have everything that you need. Perfect. With Laravel, it's a first party edition. It's called Laravel Breeze. It just comes with a scaffolded auth out of the box. And if you needed teams and things like um, token management, everything like that, that comes out of the box too. But this reason alone isn't the only reason why I choose Laravel. Number two, subscription integrations. Stripe is everywhere. And most of you and people who are probably watching this video want to build a subscription service. So yes, you can put a Stripe checkout link and then you can manually just um, add a user to your database who is going to be you know, uh, subscribed to your account now. And if they ever want to cancel, they can email you and you can do it all manually. That's perfect. I'd say go for that if it means that you are putting an MVP up as quickly as possible. But if you're like me, you're someone who wants to make sure they have everything in place and is kind of like a perfectionist where you're like, okay, yeah, but if what if I'm out of town or someone emails me and I'm not able to get to my computer in time, then they get frustrated and they, you know, refund and everything like that. 
Okay. If you wanted to build all that integration in a Next.js app, for example, you would have to create specific routes for webhooks from Stripe. So that way you're receiving all that information. Then you're integrating with your database to make sure that that stays up to date. And then you're creating your own custom dashboard if you're not using something like Stripe Checkout. But even if you are, you have a have to have a way to make sure that you know if those users are all, um, one, authenticated, like in point one, but two, are they actually subscribed? Um, has that webhook failed in any way and they're not actually subscribed. There's a lot of things to keep in mind. There's a lot of boilerplate that you have to write and there's a lot of things to account for. And again, there's probably some fantastic packages, some fantastic templates that are out of the box that you're like, hey, this is exactly what my app needs. Great. I'm glad for you. But Laravel has something that's a first party package out of the gate. Yes, it is paid. And no, this is not sponsored. But it's called Laravel Spark. Basically, after installing the package, I can point it to specific Stripe products in my Stripe account, and it just works. I automatically get a billing portal out of the gate that I don't have to manage, that I don't have to touch. I can brand it specifically to my account. It looks really similar to my app. I can build it into my app if I wanted to, but automatically out of the gate, I get things like subscriptions, things like Percy billing, things like uh, invoices, and a whole lot more. And all I have to do is just direct people to a specific link, literally like ahref slash billing in my application that I'm ready to go. Then anywhere in my application, this is the cool part that I know, yes, it's possible within Next.js, it's possible within JavaScript, but this is after installing like one line of code and barely doing any setup other than pointing it to my Stripe products. Then I can automatically know if that user who is logged in is subscribed to my application or not and show them what I need to show them according to their subscription status. Tying this into point one, this is an incredible benefit of having both authentication and something like billing within a first party package because it just works. It just blends together. I don't have to glue anything. I can just say auth user is subscribed and I automatically have those methods available to me. Okay, number three. Emails, cues, and cron jobs. Oh my. Them's fighting words. <laughs> As someone who grew up in the JavaScript ecosystem, I didn't even really know what any of these were up until I actually needed to figure out how to do them for a particular product that I was building. And most of modern JavaScript is serverless. Now, before you start, um, you know, typing in your comments and everything like that, yes, I know that you can probably have a $5 DigitalOcean drop and 90% of you probably do, and you're hosting a Node.js server on that. You're not even using serverless. Okay, great. But if you're running on serverless, things like queues, background jobs, even sending emails is, 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 a, is tricky. Now, again, I'm not a smart enough developer to know how to like actually work around this, and you can probably like stream your queues back or like your, your cron job or set it up. Yes, you could probably do all of that without having to reach for a specific package. But I also know I'm not smart enough to work around all of that, and I wanted something that was automatically solved out of the box. And that's another reason why I chose Laravel, because I didn't want to have to learn how to deal with queues in JavaScript and learn how to deal with the long-running process without having to actually set up a Node.js server and then change like my whole hosting strategy and everything like that. Now, again, I just wanted to point out there are some incredible tools, incredible packages, incredible services now that make this so much easier. Things like ingest or uh, upstash for Redis or resend for email. And all of these tools are fantastic. But there's still tools that you're having to pull in, you're having to pay a separate service, you're having to do all of this without doing it within the framework that you're using. So if that is you and you're 100% okay with kind of stringing all these services together, you love these services and you already have, you know, a template or a starter kit kind of already put together with all of these packages ready to go, then, then great. Keep using JavaScript. Aaron France has already put together an incredible video talking about all the little things that Laravel has out of the box. So I would refer to his video because I'm not going to go into any more depth, but just take a look at all of the first party packages that Laravel ecosystem has to offer right on their website. I mean, look at that. That is, it's a lot. I don't even know what some of them are, but that's a lot. They're there if I need them. And I think it speaks a lot to a framework where if you don't have to look somewhere else for how to do something, you don't have to search another um, documentation source. 
you can just find it all on one documentation source on the framework that you're using. And I think that speaks wonders to how the framework is specifically built for people like me who just want an opinion, who want everything put together for them, who say, hey, this is how you do it, go and do it. So for things like email, cron, cues, it's just out of the box with Laravel. Which leads me to point number four, which is community and third-party tooling. And specifically, I kind of wanted to make this another point, but we'll just say point four, it's admin panels. Everything I've talked about up until this point has been specifically first-party tools and integrations. Things built by the Laravel team or that specifically come out of the box with Laravel when you type in Laravel new blank in your terminal. But what attracted me to Laravel and why I choose it and why I think you should choose Laravel is the wide variety of packages from an ecosystem that is consistently growing. I mean, that's the reason why you clicked on this video. You've probably heard about Laravel more than you have in the past couple of years, and it's built on PHP, which is an old, old language. So why are you hearing about Laravel? But I think it's because of the growing ecosystem, the growing community, and more importantly, the growing number of third-party packages that you have available to do quite frankly, whatever you want to. So if you love gluing things together, you can still do that with Laravel, but you're still gonna get 90% of it out of the box. Side note here from future Josh, if you do want to still use React or Vue or Next.js with Laravel, you can do that. Laravel actually has starter kits to have an API Laravel backend with Next.js with all of the auth, with all of the queues, all the email stuff already built in. So you get the best of both worlds, or you can just use something like React or Vue with something like Inertia, which is basically a glue to hold your front end and back end together without having to worry about API and calling. Okay, back to the show. I mean, just think about all of the incredible things that you've seen built for Next.js. Now multiply that by years of tenure that Laravel has. I mean, there's this company called Spotsy. And they literally have a package for anything that you could think about with Laravel. If, I mean, if you want things like webhooks in Laravel or image optimizer or things like an activity log or a rate XML or a media library or Laravel backup. I mean, there's so much. Look at this. Look at this scroll bar. There's so much that I can't even say it all on this one video. Or there's something like Filament, which is an admin panel, and honestly, so much more that my SaaS is actually built strictly using Filament, where you have this CRUD tooling out of the box without having to maintain a separate admin application. You just kind of point it to your specific models, your specific database, and it just gives you an admin panel out of the box. That's wild. I'm not a smart developer. I'm someone who's built a few mildly successful applications and products that make a decent amount of money in a framework called Laravel after building around in JavaScript for four to five years. I like magic. I like opinions. I like being told exactly how to do what I want to do in the framework that I'm using. And I get all of that with Laravel. So if you're someone who is once again annoyed to have to find another package or template to kind of do that one thing that should be relatively simple within the JavaScript framework that you're using, or you're just someone not like me who is a good enough developer to just want to try something new, try a new framework, try a new language, and you want to get an app up and running as quick as possible and start making money, well then you should just choose Laravel.